I am so excited and grateful you're here because I'm going to be showing you how to achieve these super high-end farmhouse decor looks using Amazon wood in just a few easy steps. If that's something you're interested in, then just keep watching. Okay, sweet friends, so this is the wood that we are going to be using in this entire video. So for DIY number one, I'm going to take eight of these pieces of wood. Now it comes in this box just like this with 12 pieces in it. All of the pieces are a little bit different and they are like reclaimed barn wood. So I thought that that was pretty cool. Thank you Paige Komar for telling me about this. You guys are literally amazing and always give me such amazing ideas and I just love to give credit where credit is due. I did not find this wood. One of you guys of my sweet subscribers showed me this wood. So it has actually been sitting in my closet for a while and as you guys know I just moved back to my she shed if you guys did not know and you're new i do have a crafty she shed that my husband completely redone the inside i will leave that that video linked in the right hand corner for you guys to watch after this video so i take eight of the pieces, I almost said four. I took eight of the pieces, I put four at the top and four at the bottom, and I just kind of arranged them the way that I like them with the wood. Um, I What I did was I kind of tried to make them look as cohesive as possible, and then I flipped them over. Then I'm gonna glue all of the pieces together on the sides, the tops and the bottoms of them to make sure that they stick together really nicely. Now, I do want to make a little disclaimer. Maybe it might not be the same for you, but you guys, I touched my face and my face itched so, so, so bad. So just be aware when you guys are working with this wood, and I will leave it linked in the description box as well as the pinned comment for you guys in my Amazon shop. Um, but I did see that only like eight are left in stock. You can also just search from that same link, Reclaimed Barn Wood, and there should be a bunch of options come up. So once I had them all glued together, then I used my electric stapler to staple all of the seams together. Next, I'm going to take these jumbo craft sticks from Walmart. They are only $3.97 for a big pack of 75. And just to reinforce those seams, I'm going to use some hot glue and my jumbo popsicle sticks to glue it all together. I also run one right down the middle as well as in between all of the pieces where they meet. Next, I'm going to flip it over and then to create the frame around this piece, I'm going to take these pieces of poplar that I get from Home Depot. I believe they're about $3 a piece and they come in three foot pieces and then I just measure out the frame and cut it with my DeWalt mini circular saw. Next, I'm going to take my mini zip sander and I'm going to sand down the edges that were a little splintered. And then once I get done sanding down the edges, then I'm going to lay out a piece of parchment paper. I almost said wax paper, but it's actually parchment paper. And I'm going to paint all of my pieces with my white Waverly chalk paint. Now, I like to take these little containers from Dollar Tree because I like to get the bigger jars of Waverly paint from my local Walmart. And I like to just dump a little of the paint into the little containers just so that way I don't have to dip out of the bigger bottles. I do give these a distressed coat of paint. I'm not too worried about giving them a really thick coat just because you guys know if you've been around for any amount of time then I personally love dry brushing. I'm going to dry brush these anyway so there's no sense in wasting paint. 
I also really like the natural wood to show through as well but if you guys don't like that look I'm only here for inspiration to show you what I'm creating for my home what fits my decor if you don't like the style if you don't like the colors totally change it up to fit your style Next, I'm going to take some Waverly Antique Wax and a chip brush. I get these bigger chip brushes from Home Depot once again. And I'm just going to dip my paintbrush into the antique wax just a little bit on the end of my chip brush. I'm going to dab off the excess and then I start by dry brushing all the way around each piece like the edges. And then I go ahead and I dry brush on the top of the piece of wood. Now, I like to layer my dry brushing. You can always add more, but in order to tone it down, you'd have to paint over it again with white. So I really like to layer my dry brushing. I'm going to do the exact same thing on our wood piece with my chip brush and some white Waverly chalk paint. But I quickly realized that I shouldn't have been <laughs> dipping into my container of paint. So I did go ahead and take some paint out of the container and put it in the lid to dab into. Because this reclaimed bar barn wood has a lot of splinters in it. So it was getting into my white paint. Once again, I layered my white paint until my eyes were happy. I suggest that you do the same. And then I went ahead and I dried it with my blow dryer. Once I was completely done drying the piece and it was completely dried, wow, that made no sense. <laughs> oh my goodness, you guys, it's late and my kids have been acting crazy today. So it's been a long day. Please bear with me, but I'm going to take my frame. I'm going to lay it out on my piece just to make sure everything fits together really nicely. And I still ended up gluing it wrong, but that's okay. I'm going to show you how to fix it here in a minute in case you make the same mistake, but I'm just going to glue all of my pieces down with some hot glue. Now, I like to go ahead and glue down my side pieces first and then glue the middle pieces just so that way I know that the edges are completely covered. I can always add to the pieces if they're not long enough to like butt together, if you will, um, but I can always add some lightweight spackling or some wood putty to fill in the gaps. So that's the reason that I start with the side pieces. So at the top, you can see here that I did end up gluing the right hand piece a little bit more further over to the right. So the pieces didn't fit together perfectly, but no big deal. You cannot even see it in the end. I took some lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree and I just filled in those spaces. While the lightweight spackling was drying, I took the extra piece of poplar that I had, I measured it out for the middle, and once again, I used my DeWalt Mini Circular Saw, which is always linked in my Amazon shop. I believe in buying tools that are a little bit more pricey, but that are going to last me longer. That's why we love DeWalt, but um, it is linked in my Amazon shop for you guys, so you can kind of see what it is. And then if you guys want to buy a cheaper version or that one, then you can at least see exactly which tool it is. So once that piece was cut, I once again painted it with a distress coat of my white Waverly chalk paint. I dried it with my blow dryer and then once again dry brushed it with my Waverly wax and my big chip brush. Thank you. 
once again, once my eyes were happy, I went ahead, dried it with my blow dryer, and then glued that down right in the middle. Next, I'm gonna take square dowels that once again are always linked in my Amazon shop. Originally, I was gonna use the quarter inch dowels, but I realized that once I cut them down, they would have been a little bit too high to fit in the middle. Like they're more thick than the poplar is, and I didn't like that look. So I went with the smaller dowel rod. I believe this is 5 18 Don't quote me, but I will leave it in my Amazon shop for you guys. It will be the smallest, the smallest size dowel that I had. And I just laid out the pieces in an X. I used my pencil to mark where they are. I don't do anything fancy, no fancy cuts. I literally lay it down. I use my pencil to mark the corner. And then I use my miter shears, once again, linked in my Amazon shop, to cut those down to fit into the corners. Now for the cross piece, you're gonna do the exact same thing. Mark them in the corners cut them down and then once you have each end cut then you're going to lay it over your piece once again you're going to mark and cut out the middle of the dowel rods now these miter shears do do angles so you could totally hold it up to the angles on the miter shear, but I just find it much easier to hold the dowel rod to the blade right up against my pencil mark and cut it that way. And you might need to move your dowel rod around a little bit, but I can promise you it's super easy. There's nothing to it. So don't get nervous, you guys. The only way to know if you can do something is to try it. If you mess it up, it's no no big deal you can always fix it you guys I constantly mess up my projects you're gonna see in this project that there are several mistakes that I make and mistakes are okay because mistakes are how you learn and how you grow I then just repeat the exact same steps for the left hand side and I almost cut it out but I get a lot of comments that say that you guys enjoy when I leave these parts in. I used to think like nobody would watch it, people would skip through, but I quickly realized that the more you show how to do something, the better off people will get and maybe the more comfortable you will be. And like I said, the more you do something, the more comfortable you're gonna get. I was not ever perfect at DIY. I started DIYing as a kid. Um, if you did not know, I am a recovering heroin addict and in my addiction for 12 years, I did not touch a single craft supply. When I got clean and got better, I quickly picked it up again because DIY is my therapy. It is my outlet. I love to do it. Now, I've had a bunch of kids in the last couple years, so I've been on and off DIYing here on YouTube as best as I possibly could. Um, but the more I do things, the better I get. So I would just encourage you guys to step out outside of your comfort zone. I have to do that all the time because, you know, not everybody likes farmhouse, not everybody likes seasonal decor. So I do try to step outside of my comfort zone to appeal to a wider audience and to help more people DIY. Um, and I always find that when I step outside of my comfort zone, I'm completely shocked at the progress that I make and the things that I come up with. So all that to say, you're awesome, you're amazing, you can do it if you set your mind to it. So once I was done cutting all of my X pieces, then I made sure to mark each piece. So for the left, I put like LB for left bottom, LM for left middle, and LT for left top, and I did the same for the right, so RB etc etc so once all of my pieces were on the side then I just like kind of butted them all together this is the easiest way to 
to paint. <laughs> Y'all know I can't talk if you've been around. I can't talk. But um, the easiest way to paint dowel rods because they are so tiny and they're a little bit hard to handle when painting them. I just kind of like push them all together and paint them like they're one big piece and then flip them over, do the exact same thing. So once all three sides that you're going to see were painted, then once again, I took my chip brush and my antique Waverly wax and I dry brushed all three of those sides as well. It's much easier to dry brush and paint them off of the piece than on the piece because I didn't want to have big globs of paint on my piece. Now do not glue these down before you lay them out again and make sure that all the pieces fit together nicely because sometimes when you paint them, I don't know why, but they don't fit together right. So if you put the hot glue on there and then you're like, oh crap, this doesn't fit together nicely, then it's just a big mess. So to avoid that, make sure to lay out your pieces once again, look on the back, see where each piece goes and then as you see here you're going to glue them down now i got some hot glue on the side here is one of my mistakes i got some hot glue on the side of my project no big deal once it dried i took my sander and just sanded off that hot glue i then repeated the same steps on the right hand side Now I made a bigger version of this, but instead of X's, they were boxes. So like, like a window frame. Um, if you guys did not see that video, I created something to go over my bed. We just bought our first house this year, which I was super proud of. And I had so much fun decorating my bedroom. So I made a bigger piece and I wasn't sure if I wanted to do the exact same thing. So I kind of held some things up and I didn't really like anything else. So I did ultimately go with the wreaths. Now I had some wreaths already made, but they were a little bit too big for this particular piece. So I did just pull out these grapevine, I couldn't remember, these grapevine wreaths that I got from Hobby Lobby. And at first I took this eucalyptus that I got from Walmart and I started by cutting all the eucalyptus off of the pick and then just kind of pushing the end into my grapevine wreath going all the way around. But once I put like three pieces in there and held it up, I wasn't too happy with it. So I tried a few other different greeneries and this was the one that I ultimately decided on. Um, the one that I liked the best. I don't, I think this is like a smaller eucalyptus. I'm not sure. Let me know down in the comments what this greenery is called, but I'm pretty sure this is eucalyptus as well. It's just a different type of eucalyptus. And as you can see, you can adjust the leaves on it. I didn't like the leaves to be too far apart because I don't really like too, too much of that grapevine wreath showing through. So I did cut it off of the pick, adjust my eucalyptus to my liking, and then I just arranged all of my pieces going all the way around my wreath, one after another, just tucking in the ends of the eucalyptus into the grapevine. I found that I did not have to hot glue it because it was in there nice and tight. And then if there was pieces hanging out of the wreath, then I just went ahead and cut those down with my wire cutters as well. I repeat the same step for the second wreath. Now, I was actually live on TikTok doing this part, and you guys... 
<laughs> I'm so ridiculous and OCD. This took me a good while. This took me probably about an hour to do these wreaths because I'm so particular. My eyes, when they're not happy, I just can't move on to the next step. It has to be absolutely perfect in my eyes for me to move on. So I adjusted these greeneries around so many different times um, until I was happy. So once I was finally happy, then I took some cotton from Dollar Tree. And if you did not know, you can either cut off the cotton with wire cutters or you can just grab the cotton by the end and pull it off the pick because it is different pieces just wrapped in this like brown paper. So I just ripped those off and then unraveled the brown paper from the bottom. And then there's two little pieces of wire. So you don't even have to glue this. You can just separate the wire and then twist it on the back for these to stick to the wreaths. Now, once again, I rearranged these pieces of cotton several, several times, but I didn't like the way that it looked. I liked it the natural way better. So I took this piece of burlap ribbon at the top of my wreath. I just kind of separated the greenery and arranged my burlap the way that I liked it. And this is going to act as a little hanger. And then I repeated that same step for the second one. And then to make sure that these fit together and stay together really nicely. I did just glue the edges together and then I also glued them with some hot glue to the top of my piece. Now I like to hold this at the top and push the ribbon over it. Now this burlap ribbon was pretty thick so I wanted to make sure that it would look right at the top before I glued it. So I just pushed it over the top, made sure that it was nice and flat, and then went ahead and glued that down on both sides. Okay, now I was going to be done with this piece, but y'all know I'm so extra and I just kept adding and adding and I feel like that's what makes my projects what they are just because like I get ideas as I go and that's the beauty with DIY. If you guys do this project and like you come up with something better or different or whatever the case may be make it to your liking. So I kind of felt that it was just a little bare in the wreath, even though you can't see it here. Um, I just felt that like adding some extra different greenery would just make it look even more high end. So I took some picks off of this other greenery that I had in my stash. If you guys did not know, I have an entire floral tree that my husband built me. Um, that is in my shed video. He shows you guys how to make it. So definitely check that out. I will leave it at the end. Um, but I go ahead and glue those pieces around in between my eucalyptus. So to finish this piece, I took these little L brackets that I get at Home Depot. I had them in my stash and they are originally silver. So I, I took them <laughs> out of the pack and I painted them with my ink Waverly chalk paint. I gave it one coat, dried it with my blow dryer, and then I gave it a second coat to make sure none of that silver was showing through. My decor is like gold and black. Like I don't really like silver very much unless it's like galvanized metal. Um, but if you like this silver look, then you can totally skip this step. But I personally like the black, so I gave it two coats. And then I was going to screw them down. However, I just didn't have much time and I wanted to move on to the next project. So I did go ahead and glue those down with some hot glue. That was it, you guys. Look at this gorgeous piece. I know that that probably seemed like a lot, but I, I can promise you guys this project only took me about an hour and a half to create. So I know that if I can do it, you can do it as well. I absolutely love this barn wood, how it has real like nail holes or screw holes, whatever you would like to call it, and just how rustic it is. So I'm curious to hear what you guys think down in the comments below, but I am absolutely in love. 
Hey y'all, I'm so happy that you guys are enjoying this. If you like it, please don't forget to share this out and subscribe. It really helps my channel. We are almost at 100K and I can't do it without your help. Let's jump back in. For the next DIY, y'all, this was so super easy. All I did was take two of these pieces and I glued it down in the middle. Once again, use my electric stapler to staple it together. This is also linked in my Amazon shop. Whatever I can link for you guys will be linked in my Amazon shop. I will leave all of the links in my pinned comment as well as the description box below. And you will see all of my links are now in one place just click that and you will see my Am Amazon shop also if you guys want to know how I just recently lost 80 pounds and make money doing it then please text my number the word ketones I would love to help you guys feel good again lose weight get better energy it's not just for weight loss I think a lot of people are confused about that it's not just for weight loss. The product was actually formulated for the brain. Um, so if you just need better energy, better focus, better mood, this product is for you as well. And if you guys want to learn how to make money online from a mentor who you guys, I will literally hold your hand. I'm so passionate about it because it has changed my entire financial future and I am just so excited to help other people to work online from your phone if you're at your nine to five and you're just so tired of it and you want something different text my number the word biz and let me help you guys help your kids and your future and all of the things because I really help everybody else but myself so I look at it as like changing their future you know so anyway um, moving on I glued it together used my popsicle sticks in the middle but I cut them down to size and then I also put one on each side so that way when I use my command strips that it would be nice and even I gave it a distress coat of white wear really chalk paint and then distressed it with my antique wax next I took a piece of my scrap poplar I measured it out and cut it down to size and then once I was done cutting it I cut my transfers apart and I didn't show it just because you guys have seen me painting and dry brushing the whole video but I did just paint it with my white Waverly chalk paint and dry and yeah I dried it I dried it with antique wax y'all <laughs> I dry brushed it with my antique wax and then once those were completely dry then I took this hello transfer from my chalk site I will leave all of the chalk couture items that I used down in the same spots that I had mentioned the description box as well as the pinned comment which this video I only ended up using one transfer and my black paste so I'll leave that all down there for you guys but I took the hello and I transferred that to the middle of my reclaim barn wood and then I transferred on the this must be the place to the poplar and I get a lot of questions Melissa how do I make sure that it doesn't bleed and um how do i give it the best application that i can that i can well it's pretty simple and here it did bleed because i did not press this down good enough so you want to stir up your paste really really well then you're going to put your transfer down and you want to smooth it out really well making sure to smooth out all around the letters or whatever piece you're doing so if it's a picture make sure you smooth with your fingers around your piece really really well make sure it's really stuck down then you're going to take your squeegee and you're going to dip into your paste and you're going to squeegee that on with nice even pressure once you pull it up you're going to pull it up super super slow so you can see here how slow i was going and i realized that i did not push it down good enough because it did bleed a little bit but it didn't bother me because you couldn't really tell very much um, but that is how you get the best application for the hello 
I left it dry just a little bit that way when I pulled up my transfer it kind of gave it that distressed look which I personally love if you don't like that distressed look make sure that you pull it up immediately and you always want to wash your transfers immediately that way you can get the most uses out of them and lay them sticky side up to dry you'll wipe it down with a paper towel i know that sounds crazy it won't stick to it i promise wipe the excess off with a paper towel and then stick it back to the backing sheet once it's completely dry next i'm going to take this little itty bitty house transfer with a heart in the middle just to kind of make a little design on either side of the hello. I felt that it was just a little bit too plain. And then once that was completely dry, I took my rub-on transfers from Dollar Tree and I just transferred on these little pieces of eucalyptus on either side of the little houses. To pull up my rub-on transfer, I just took my knife to get it going and then I pull it up very slowly so that I can make sure that it is actually transferred on and that was it for this project you guys look how absolutely stunning it is now you could display these by themselves or you can put them all together as I did here I absolutely love the look together but I would love the look separate as well and as always don't forget to let me know down in the comments what you guys think of DIY number two Okay, you guys, we are in the home stretch. If you guys are still here and you watch the entire thing, leave me a orange heart emoji down in the comment section. So for the last project, I took the last two pieces, glued them side by side. Once again, used my stapler and my hot glue and popsicle stick to make sure that they stick together really nicely. And then I'm gonna take this little plastic arch window from Dollar Tree. I took off the little sign that was on the front. It's just like a little cardboard paper sign. I pulled it off and sanded down the hot glue in the middle. And then I took my white Riverly chalk paint and my big chip brush and dry brushed around the arch. Now it was kind of hard to get in the middle of the arches. So I did use my mini chip brush that I got in my Amazon shop once again I have it linked and I just dry brushed in the middle as well I then took this little hook from Dollar Tree once again gave it two coats of my ink Waverly chalk paint and dry brushed that as well to make sure that it looked nice and cohesive and then I hot glued that to the top of my arch now this part I'm kind of mad at myself you guys I wish I would have left this the natural wood look because once I put the arch window down, you couldn't even really see the arch window anyway. So again, if I did this over again, I would have not dry brushed the reclaimed wood. But you live and you learn, right? <laughs> no big deal. And this, this type of wood, you can't really sand it down because, I mean, you could. But then it would have taken away from the look because there's so many, like, I don't know how to explain it like divots in this wood and I didn't want to mess it up so I just left it as is and I just know for next time but I went ahead and I dry brushed some white Waverly chalk paint if you like that look go for it and then I glued down my arch window right into the middle I then took this hanging jar from Dollar Tree and a strand of lights once again in my Amazon shop I unraveled the lights made sure that they worked and I stuck them in my jar and then I took this greenery that I got from Timu cut off the ends made sure that the raffia bow was um, nice and straight because you can see it through the jar and then I stuck both of the packs of greenery from Timu I believe it was only like two bucks a pack so no big deal I cut off the ends and put those in my jar and then I was going to be done and y'all know I'm extra so I had these little I don't even know what you want to call them but I just thought that they were like little cute fancy corners for my piece so I glued those down dry brushed it 
I hung my jar and that was it for this project you guys look how absolutely stunning this is I love it so much I love the way that it all looks together I'm curious to hear what your favorite piece in this entire video is and I would also be so grateful if you guys shared this out even if you share it to my text number I would greatly appreciate it that is how YouTube knows that you guys enjoy my content and it helps my channel to grow. Thank you guys so much for being here. None of this is possible without you. I want you to know if nobody has told you today, you are absolutely stunning. You are worthy. You are gorgeous. You literally can do anything you set your mind to. Coming from an addict who is almost nine years sober, if I can do it, I know that you can do it as well. And as always, to earn income from your phone and from your home or how I just recently lost 80 pounds or Chalk Couture Info, text my number on the screen. Until next time, I love y'all so much. Bye. Check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload or join the DIY fam here to your right.